Well, Ukraine Medical Support has started a long time ago. Um, Non-formal organization has started back in 2014 when the war just started. And me and my wife, uh, she has a medical background. And uh, when the war has developed back in uh, February, um, we understood it's um, it's a, it's a it's a bigger it's a bigger scale, and uh, there were more people that uh, required our help, and we. We organized a non-profit organization, the Ukraine Medical Support, and uh, we work since then uh, very hard every single day, and we have completed a lot, lots of missions in Ukraine. So it's been very difficult in the beginning, but uh, now it's everything is works like very nice, um, like a watch. The warehouse that's located here, it's located in Mississauga at Sheridan Center, and also we have our office in Etobicoke, in Toronto. Um, we also have um, a warehouse in Lutsk, Ukraine. Uh, this is our hub, and we bring most of most of the donations. We ship either it's an airplane or sea containers. We send them to Lutsk. This is where they go, and from Lutsk it gets distributed all over Ukraine. It doesn't go and it doesn't sit on the warehouse. Everything gets distributed the same day or within the next couple of days. Number one, what we need is some medications. Even basic, over-the-counter medications are huge and are very important. Uh, number two, hygiene items. Um, there is not much supply that goes in the country. Maybe on the western part, it's a bit different, but on the east part, it's it's very difficult. Uh, number three, food items. Um, what, what we do, we work with a few partners here uh, in, in Toronto. We also work with the partners in Ukraine. And what we do, we build boxes. People in Ukraine, um, they build boxes for us. We pay them money. So they, to build these boxes, mostly people who build these boxes, they are refugees. So what we do, we give them money and we try to help the economy as well. We try to give them some money to build these boxes. And then those boxes, they travel and, and those boxes, they contain um, food items like uh, tomato sauce. It has oils, uh, sugar, tea. It has um, meat cans, so like 24 items, the items in a box. And once those boxes are built, they put they they placed on the skids, and those skids, then they they get loaded in the trucks and they get distributed all over Ukraine as well. Now, because the winter is coming, we also try to get more winter clothes. Uh, we 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 we've been we've been collecting winter clothes an entire summer. And it's, it's been a bit, a bit funny. People are like, what do you need winter clothes? Because yes, because the winter is coming and usually winters in Ukraine are pretty cold. So yes, we're sending a lot of, uh, we already sent um, in the in our uh, missions, um, a lot of winter clothes. Um, we also ask um, for, for um, a close kids clothes, uh, usually between zero years or one year, one year old to seven years old. We receive requests for help every single day. Now, because we've been around for some time, we already work with, I don't know, maybe 20 or 30 non-for-profit organizations in Ukraine. So what they do when they send us letters, they ask, okay, we need this, we need that. So when it gets to the hub, when our, when our, um, when our um, medical supplies or hygiene products, food products, when it gets into the hub, this is when we look at the request from each from each group of people of, from different regions. And this is how we allocate these supplies. And then we, we go there and we distribute in these regions. There is no story that, that's not important. There is no story that's, that doesn't touch you. Uh, there was a kid, um, I think it was in Kiev, and um, a kid with a disability. She didn't have a mother, but she lived with a grandma. And um, so somehow in Kiev, they already can, they, they, they they adjusted, customized their apartment for their, for their needs. They had to move from Kiev to Lutsk. And they lived in the school without those customizations. So I guess when you have single mothers running with kids and they, they, they live, they, they live in, in a school or in the village somewhere, but when you have a kid with a disability living with the elder person, 
uh, so like the elder person needs help, but this elder person has to take care of the kids. This was probably the most touching thing. So that's why we try to help them as much as we can. We sent a lot of diapers. We sent um, we sent mobility uh, devices. Uh, we definitely food food items um, as as much as we can. So when we so they tell us what they need, and we try to customize it, and we try to get these orders. We also have um, on our website, on our Facebook page, um, we encourage people to go in, and we do have stories uh, for people. Uh, who, um, who, who, who've been misplaced, um, um, the, the refugees, uh, people who moved from one part, of, from eastern part of Ukraine to western part of Ukraine. Slava Ukraini, це буде Україна. Дякую. Uh, number one, uh, please don't forget, we understand the war has started a long time ago. It's been back in back in February, uh, end of February, and now we are in, we're in, we're in September. Everybody is tired of the war. Uh, we also have volunteers that are exhausted, and, uh, but it doesn't matter. The war is still there. There is no end. Some of the things I've heard, oh yeah, we already donated. Uh, like, yes, donated, but it's, it's still, the, the help still, they still need our help. So please, please donate. And, and thank you very much for your support because with, without partners like you, uh, we wouldn't be able to function as well. This is Slava from Ukraine Medical Support and we got here Raul from uh, Global Medics. And we just want to let you know that uh, we would like uh, to send another uh, shipment of uh, fire gear that goes uh, to Ukraine on... Uh... So we'll be picked up next Monday, fly next Tuesday, arrive in Vienna Wednesday and by like Friday it's in... Let's...